In a terrifying show of power, Iran unleashed two devastating assaults in 2024. First, a barrage of over 300 drones and missiles in April, and then another coordinated strike just this October, with more than 200 ballistic and cruise missiles raining down on Israel. Despite Israel's defenses boasting a 99% success rate in intercepting the barrage of drones and missiles, a far greater threat looms. Iran's Fatah hypersonic missile. With a top speed of Mach 15, the Fatah can strike Israel in just seven minutes, or by Iranian media, it could be 400 seconds, faster than any defense system can react. This is the ultimate challenge for Israel's world-class air defenses. Can they stop what seems unstoppable? In this video, we'll explore the rising hype around the Fatah missile and whether Israel can truly defend against this unprecedented weapon. Iran's Fatah hypersonic missile. Unveiled in 2023, the Fatah has a range of 1,400 kilometers, or 870 miles, and can move at a massive speed of up to Mach 15, that's 5.1 kilometers, or 3.2 miles per second, before hitting its target. Iran also said it features a movable secondary nozzle and employs solid propellants that allow for high maneuverability within and outside the atmosphere which top IRGC commanders have claimed means no missile defense system in the world is a match for it. Iranian authorities have also praised a generational leap in missile technology on the back of the Fatah, which they have said will give Iran new levels of deterrence. They have dismissed Western skepticism of Iran's development of hypersonic missiles, saying the truth will be revealed on the day such arms may be used, and that the U.S. is only skeptical as the technology undermines its efforts to sell arms to the region. Fatah's current range is just short of the distance between Tehran and Tel Aviv. But IRGC Aerospace Chief Commander Amir Ali Hajizadeh suggested that the elite force could look to hypersonics with a range of 2,000 kilometers or 1,242 miles in the near future. Iran already wields enormous power with its drones and ballistic missiles, capabilities Israel has proven it can counter. But with hypersonic missiles, it's a whole new playing field. Hypersonic missiles move at blistering speeds, at least Mach 5, or five times the speed of sound, reaching over 6,000 kilometers or 3,836 miles per hour. Ballistic missiles can achieve similar speeds, but hypersonic missiles take things further. The new class of hypersonic missiles, known as hypersonic maneuvering threats, doesn't follow the same predictable trajectory as ballistic missiles. These missiles are capable of executing sudden and unexpected maneuvers, making them much harder to track and intercept. Unlike ballistic missiles, which release their warheads after a short burst of propulsion, hypersonic maneuvering missiles can change course mid-flight, moving unpredictably at incredibly high speeds. Two key methods allow these missiles to maneuver. One, staying attached to an upper stage. The missile can delay its final trajectory shift until the defense systems have already committed to an intercept path, at which point it releases and changes direction. 2. Gliding in the atmosphere By using aerodynamic control surfaces, like fins, these missiles can bob and weave within the Earth's atmosphere, avoiding interception and extending their range. This makes the missile almost impossible to hit, as it continuously adjusts its path, effectively dodging traditional missile defense systems. Why traditional defenses struggle? Missile defense systems are designed to intercept ballistic threats which have a fixed and predictable trajectory. Once an interceptor is launched, it uses data from ground-based radars to guide it to a calculated point in the sky, where it expects the incoming missile to be. If a hypersonic missile changes course after this calculation, it's almost impossible for the interceptor to adjust in time. The missile will simply evade the defense, flying past the interceptor. Ground-based systems have further limitations. Hypersonic maneuvering missiles can exploit the Earth's curvature to evade detection. As the missile descends lower into the atmosphere, terrestrial radars lose sight of it as it dips below the horizon. 
This creates gaps in the tracking system, allowing the missile to disappear from radar and reappear closer to its target, sometimes even approaching from unexpected angles where defenses are weaker or non-existent. Hypersonic missiles can also be tracked by space-based systems, like the Space-Based Infrared System, or SBIRS. These satellites detect the initial rocket launch and provide early warnings, giving missile defense radars the ability to focus on a specific area and extend the battle space. That is the area within which interception can happen. However, even space-based systems struggle with hypersonic maneuvering threats especially if the missile stays within the atmosphere and avoids the predictable, high-altitude trajectory of ballistic missiles. To counter hypersonic threats, space-based assets would need to maintain 100% custody of the missile from launch to impact. This means tracking its every move, even during atmospheric maneuvers, a feat that current systems cannot guarantee. Hypersonic Glide Phase Interceptor the United States is moving forward on hypersonic missile defense. Northrop Grumman has been selected as the sole contractor to advance the U.S. Missile Defense Agency's Glide Phase Interceptor, or GPI, program, designed to counter hypersonic threats. The GPI system aims to intercept and destroy enemy hypersonic missiles while they are gliding at the edge of Earth's atmosphere, known as the Glide Phase. These interceptors will be launched from Aegis-equipped U.S. Navy destroyers and Aegis Ashore systems. Northrop Grumman's design, featuring advanced tracking technology, hit-to-kill accuracy, and a reignitable upper-stage engine, is tailored to neutralize these high-speed threats across a range of altitudes. The GPI program, in partnership with Japan's Ministry of Defense, is expected to reach initial operational capability by the late 2020s. Northrop Grumman's continued work includes refining the system's design, conducting flight experiments, and leveraging digital engineering tools to accelerate development. This program is a critical step in addressing the hypersonic missile threat, but not the only one. It's time for Directed Energy Weapons. If you think hypersonic missiles are fast, that's nothing compared to the speed of light. In fact, this technology was being developed for missile defense long before today's hypersonic threats became a reality, but it was sidelined as priorities shifted towards the global war on terror. So, how do lasers work as missile defense? Once a laser has a direct line of sight to its target, it's game over for the missile. The speed of light makes it impossible for a high-velocity warhead to outmaneuver or evade the laser. Unlike traditional missile interceptors, which must predict where the missile will be and aim ahead, a laser can engage the warhead exactly where it is in real time. There's no need to aim ahead or worry about the missile's sudden changes in direction. The laser simply hits the target where it exists at that precise moment, eliminating any chance for the missile to dodge. Lasers offer a multitude of advantages over traditional missile interceptors. First, they provide variable power levels, meaning they can be lethal at full power or simply disable a target at lower settings. For instance, using a laser to destroy small tactical missiles by detonating their rocket motors or targeting the avionics to lose altitude and crash. In terms of cost and logistics, lasers are also incredibly efficient. Each shot costs about a dollar in fuel far cheaper than launching missile interceptors, which have limited magazine depth. With interceptors, there's always the concern of running out before the enemy runs out of missiles. But with lasers, this isn't an issue. You could theoretically fire as long as you have power, giving you a nearly bottomless magazine at a fraction of the cost. Given the advantages of lasers, where should Israel place them to defend against the growing threat of hypersonic missiles? For localized defense, lasers could be positioned at critical infrastructure sites, airfields, or cities as point defense systems. However, hypersonic gliders, which can threaten entire regions with their long-range and maneuverable flight paths, require a different strategy. The most effective way to defend against these hypersonic threats is by placing laser systems in space. From orbit, DE platforms can maintain constant tracking of a hypersonic missile from launch to impact. By leveraging the speed of light, space-based lasers could neutralize the missile at any point along its flight path, long before it reaches its target. 
This birth-to-death tracking and interception capability would provide an unparalleled level of protection. In addition to their speed and accuracy, space-based DE platforms offer another crucial advantage. They do not create a debris field. If we ever needed to defend ourselves in space, lasers could disable threats without the risk of generating dangerous debris that could harm satellites or other space-based assets. As hypersonic threats continue to evolve, the world will need solutions that are just as advanced and unpredictable. Directed energy platforms, especially in space, could provide that solution, offering a defense against hypersonic missiles that no current missile interceptor can match. If that makes sense and you want to prove its defense in reality, subscribe to the Front Cost channel and give this video a like. Thanks for watching.